officially August. I've been kind of feeling the pressure and I've been doing a little bit of planning and trying to get ready for next year. So I thought I would just show you the things that I've been doing to plan for my English classes and my history classes for next year. And by next year, I guess I mean like two weeks from now. So I'm not finished by any means and my stuff isn't really all that organized. This isn't going to be this really polished video, but I just thought I would show you the process because sometimes actually that's more useful for me to see. Okay, so I teach in California and we use the Common Core State Standards. We got new curriculum. We use the ERWC modules, which is, which what does that stand for? Expository Reading and Writing Curriculum. And that was just what our district picked for us and we like did some trainings on it and stuff. I think it's pretty good, like it's a pretty good concept. My only issue with it is that I wish that the topics that they seem to just like randomly pull out of thin air actually aligned to other curriculum that students are doing. Like we had one on Energy Crossroads last year and it was so good because I happened to do it at the same exact time as they were learning about oil and fossil fuels and stuff like that in science and then they came to my class and they were like, oh I totally understand all of this stuff already and they could explain it. And I think that's the whole entire point of Common Core anyway. And this is all for sixth grade English, by the way. So what I did is I went in and I separated out every standard into the different categories. There's five categories, like reading information, reading literature, writing, speaking and listening, and language. And I typed up every single standard into a new document and I kind of made two columns. So one column with the standard and then one column where you could write down a lesson to meet that standard. Okay, so here's what I'm trying to do this year. So I know that I have to do four ERWC modules. So one of them's on Wolves, one is on a Steve Jobs speech at Stanford thing. One is on Energy Crossroads and then one is like a research project on prehistoric art. And the novel that I'm going to teach this year is Farewell to Manzanar again. So knowing that I'm going to cover all that curriculum, right now I'm trying to figure out how I can align this to the standards. So I printed out all of the standards. This took a really, really long time to like type all these up and make my own little document because you can't edit like the standards online. Okay, it looks like this, which is basically impossible to see, but these are the reading information standards. So I'll just read some of them to you. For example, one of the standards is determine a theme or central idea of a text and how it is conveyed through particular details. Provide a summary of the text distinct from personal opinions or judgments. And I just happened to remember that one of the lessons we did with like this legend about the, how there's two wolves inside of you and whichever one you feed is the one who gets stronger. I think that would be a good lesson to meet this standard. So I'm just going to jot that down so that I don't forget. And then I know I at least met that standard once throughout the year. There's another standard where you're supposed to integrate information presented in different media or formats, as well as in words, to develop a coherent understanding of a topic or issue. And so I know that there's like this Wolves documentary that goes with some of the readings that we did. And so I could just specifically focus on those lessons to make sure that I'm aligning them to this standard. So, and I even wrote myself a little note on here. Like I know that for the reading information, standards. I'm mostly going to meet that with my Wolves ERWC module. And there are probably a few things in here that there just won't be a lesson out of that module that can meet some of these standards. So I'll have to do that with something else. And then it's just kind of nice to like see this printed out because this one is only actually one page. There's only one page of standards on reading information. But for some reason last year, like that was so emphasized to us, like the kids need to be reading information, not just narrative. So I hit this like super hard. I did so many lessons that were based on these standards. But then I'm looking at the other stuff and I'm like, oh, I never even did that. So it's kind of just even useful to see it like printed out and put into different stacks because I'm like, oh, the language had like a million standards and we never ever had time to work on language. So sorry, kids from last year. And then the other thing that I'm doing with every single set of standards is I just went through and kind of looked at key vocabulary words that they probably don't know. And I just picked these out myself. These are not some kind of vocabulary word that comes from 
the state or the common core standards or anything like that. I was just like, these are probably words we should know. So like for reading information, we've got anecdote. I don't think they know what an anecdote is in sixth grade. Technical meaning, author's purpose, media, format, issue, evaluate, argument, claim, reason, evidence, presentation. So I think those are all words that I'm going to need to specifically go over and explain and have them work with. Because a lot of this stuff, I just think that they're going to understand that concept by the time I'm done with the lesson, but I never really explicitly teach them what that word is, and that can't be good. So I'm going to have them do a standards notebook this year also, and I went through and counted, and there are 133 vocabulary words that I want them to know just out of the standards. So by the time you account for like a couple days if I'm pulled out and I have a sub, or like if it's a testing day or whatever, 133 days is going to be pretty much every single school day. So I think at the beginning of every day, I'm going to have them do something with that vocabulary word. So like media, for example, because they might just not exactly know what that word is. And it's not too complicated, but I'll give them a definition. They can write out an example, maybe draw themselves a little picture. And so just each page of their notebook will have a different standard on it. So at least I know I've just like covered everything and then they can use that standards notebook to study for the SBAC test at the end of the year. The other thing I think I'm going to do is keep a running list of all of those words because I'm not necessarily going to do them in the order that I have written out. I might, you know, try and align the word to the lesson that we have for that day. So on my like website that we have for the class, I'll just keep a running list of all the words in order so then if they were absent or they were late or something like that, then they can make sure to have every single word in their standard notebook. Okay, so just to give you a couple more examples of how I'm going to do this, um, okay, for the speaking and listening standards, I just happen to remember that that energy crossroads module really lent itself to a lot of like presentations and discussions. And so we could meet a lot of the speaking and listening standards through that module. And I think we did last year too. I like really emphasized this one. And again, this one's only one page and not that much, but these were the two that I like totally hit hard last year. And then it turns out that the ones I left out were actually the ones that had more standards. So like one standard is come to discussions prepared, having read or studied required material, explicitly draw on that preparation by referring to evidence on the topic, text, or issue to probe and reflect on ideas under discussion. And they are going to have no idea what any of that means. These are definitely not like student friendly standards, these are just for the teachers. But I know that there are like six or seven different energy sources. And so students could pick different energy sources and then come to a discussion ready with their research to talk about the history of their energy source and explain like how you get it, what its impact on the earth is, how efficient it is. And we did a bunch of lessons like that last year too. So this should be pretty easy. But now I know exactly how to align it to this standard. And then there are some things like adapt speech to a variety of context and tasks, demonstrating command of formal English when indicated or appropriate. So I could tie that in with one of these modules, or I have a feeling that I could find a really cool just like code switching lesson. You know, I could have them like stick as many slang words as you possibly can into one sentence and tell us this specific information. And then the next time, put as many vocabulary words as you possibly can into it. So again, that might not necessarily work with our energy crossroads module, but we could just do that with anything and that would just be kind of a fun day. And I kind of like that that's a standard. It just says adapt your speech. You don't have to completely change your speech, but adapt it for the situation. And then again, I have a bunch of vocabulary words for speaking and listening. I mean, like one of the words is collegial, pertinent, accentuate. And I don't expect them to be using those type of words in everyday language or even really have that great of an understanding of what they mean. But since these standards are a strand and they're going to be doing the same types of things, but it just gets a little bit more complicated and intense as they get older and older, I just want to expose them to all of these things. And then they're going to see it again next year. They're going to have very similar standards next year. They're almost the same exact thing. 
But I think this is one good thing about the Common Core standards is that they're exposed to it every year. It's not going to be a complete surprise next year that you have to come to a discussion prepared and do some research and use academic language. Maybe next year you're going to have to bring in more than one source or something like that. Okay, so just a couple other things. This one is the reading literature standards, and I already know I'm going to do Farewell to Manzanar, and so that's probably how I'm going to hit all of these standards. And so, like, one of the standards is compare and contrast the experience of reading a story, drama, or poem to listening to or viewing an audio, video, or live version of the text, including contrasting what they see and hear when reading the text to what they perceive when they listen or watch. And so we watched Go For Broke last year, which is about the 442nd Regimental Combat Unit, and they loved, like, seeing the video. So I'm glad that it's in the standards to kind of look at information from different formats and kind of make connections between the two. Plus, I got us a grant to go to the Japanese American National Museum, so we are also going to get to see the museum exhibit about Manzanar and like see objects. We're doing an objects tour and stuff. These standards I'm really not worried about. I know I've, I've got almost all of them filled out already. I'll definitely be able to meet all of these just by doing Farewell to Manzanar. And then I've got lots and lots of vocabulary words that I'm gonna have to do with this, but it's fine because as we read through the book, you know, we can just focus on one of these vocabulary words each day. I've got a really good lesson for connotation, figurative language, point of view is really easy with this, narrator is really easy with this, explicit, inference. Inference is a word that shows up all the time on the SBAC and two years ago when we took like the practice one, I remember my kids did not know what that word was. They had no idea what it meant to infer. So again, like that word comes up in the standards and you just kind of think like, oh yeah, we noticed in the book that like sometimes it didn't flat out say something, but we kind of got what it meant. But if you don't actually say, okay, and that is inferring, then when they go to take the test, they're not going to know that they already know how to do that. So again, the reason that I'm going to be so crazy about all these standards vocabulary words is because they do show up on the SBAC. And if you didn't explicitly teach them, they might think they don't know how to do it. Okay, so then the writing standards are a lot longer. There's more writing standards, and writing is not just going to fit into one module. Like, I already know at the beginning of the year, I do this, like, really silly Jane Schaefer essay on, you know that video of the kid that, like, argues with his mom about the cupcakes, that Mateo kid? I could do a video about that one day. Um, but I already know I'm going to do that at the beginning of the year, and then um, they have to write informative or, or explanatory texts. So I could put that in with like the wolves or the energy crossroads. They're supposed to write narratives, and so I have them write a family history after they read like, you know, Jeannie's family history from Farewell to Manzanar. They have to do research and present their knowledge, and I didn't get to the prehistoric art module last year. We totally ran out of time, but I think that that's more of a research project, so I could put that there. And this one has a billion vocabulary words, like, oh my goodness. So like, domain-specific language, event sequence, dialogue, pacing, clauses, shift. We went over a lot of those concepts just generally, but I don't think I really made it explicitly clear what some of those words were. So this is just how I'm holding myself accountable this year. Last one, these are the language standards, and... Okay, two years ago when I first started teaching English, I did tons of language and I always use um, vocabulary, the vocabulary videos. It's on vocabulary.com. It's like a subscription. I just pay the money and get the subscription because the lessons are so good and it makes my life easier. I have a blog post about it if you check my blog. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to integrate that into the modules or the book or whatever because there are a ton of language standards and last year I did like no language. There are so many vocabulary words that have to do with language. Possessive, intensive, vague, ambiguous, antecedents, commas, parentheses, dashes affixes, roots, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna get all this in. Okay, so as you can see, I have a ton of work and planning to do for my poor little sixth graders, but I really need to make sure that they know how to do this. So, okay, then I also teach eighth grade history, and so there really are not history standards yet, and I don't think they're ever going to agree on common history standards across the whole United States. It'll never happen. 
If you are a historian, you can probably figure out why. In the different regions of the United States, they kind of see things differently, so I don't think there's any way we're ever going to get common standards. So in the meantime, we have just writing standards and reading standards for history. Okay, and I haven't even done much with this yet, but this is like two pages of writing standards. So, for example, we are supposed to write arguments focused on discipline-specific content. We did that a ton last year because we were told like, oh, they need to be writing argumentative essays. And so we did that like six or seven times. But then the second standard is write informative or explanatory text, including the narration of historical events. And we didn't do that at all because they weren't emphasizing that for whatever reason. But that's half the standards. That takes up half the page. And so I should have been having my kids do that. And it's kind of hard to move into like argumentative essays if you can't even just like explain a point that has no argument. So I'm going to start off this year with just explanatory writing and then move into argumentative writing. And these just say conduct short research projects to answer a question. And so we kind of did do lessons like that where I would already have the primary source documents drawn up for them and they could use those to answer a question. So I've got lots and lots of resources with like primary source documents and stuff for US history. The Stanford Shegg website is fabulous. I'll link that below because I use that all the time. Okay, and then there's also reading standards. There's not that many, it's just one page, but in the standards, they're supposed to identify key steps in a text description of a process related to history like how a bill comes to law, how interest rates are raised or lowered, whatever. So they are supposed to still be reading the textbook and making sure they can understand like a sequence of events and not just reading primary source documents because in order to prepare them for college, they do need to be able to read a textbook and kind of break down the information. But then there are other standards, you know, like identify aspects of a text that reveal an author's point of view or purpose. So I've got really good like Andrew Jackson, primary source documents that show that he was a big old bigot and racist and did lots of terrible things. And we can see that through some of his writing. So anyway, I'm just trying to go into this year, like, you know, doing the whole backwards planning thing, like starting from the standards and then just making sure that I fill in a lesson to at least touch every single standard. So I put all of these documents on my Teachers Pay Teachers store site. They're not all that exciting. Like everything else on that website is super like cute and fun fonts and graphics and everything. These are not, they're really boring. It's just a Word document so you could edit it if you want to. But it did take me hours upon hours while my kids were doing the SBAC test to type up all of these standards and put it in a format so that I could like write a lesson down next to it. So that could save you some time. So they're a dollar. I tried to do like a bundle, but I didn't know how. This is the first time I've ever put anything on Teachers Pay Teachers. So sorry, leave me some feedback if there are things that I should change. I don't really know what I'm doing. I just thought I would share this with other English teachers and history teachers just to make your planning a little bit easier. I'm probably gonna reprint these out on like different colored paper and then just push pin them to my wall near my teacher desk so that I can just like constantly see and track what standards we've covered and what we still need to do. So I think this is gonna make my planning this year a lot better and just make sure that my kids actually get exposed to everything that they're supposed to be exposed to before they take the SBAC tests. So anyway, I hope that's helpful to you. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in my next video, bye.